Oh, hello! Welcome to another installation of uh, Chan Academy, and uh, let's just uh, get to it. So, uh, what we talked about in class today was we did the Xbox method, which is basically what you want to use instead of just guessing to like help you guys organize your thoughts as far as like factoring when it's a quadratic and has something big like this uh, 2 in front of the x squared. So when the a is bigger than 1, you can't just do the area model because it becomes really hard to just kind of like guess. Okay, So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it and there's two parts to this. It's factoring using the xbox method and then finding the zeros. So let's start off using some color coordinations. So I'm going to go with green and gold, you know, go Temple City. So the first thing you do is you take 2x squared and I'm going to take, uh, that looks like gold, all right, and negative 12, and you multiply those two together. When you multiply those two together, you get, and I'm going to switch it to soft pass colors, let's, yeah, whatever, let's go red. Let's go 2x squared times negative 12 gives me negative 24x squared. x squared and then you go ahead and take this part right here and you're going to go ahead and put that on the bottom negative 2x All right so you're looking for two numbers here that will multiply and give you negative 24 and will add up and give you negative 2 so let's think about a couple of different ones we could use 1 and 12 or sorry 2 and 12 but if we added those together, I don't think it would be anywhere close to negative 2. So let's try another one. 3 and 8. Well, they can multiply and give me negative 24. But those things are a little too far apart. Even if I made it negative 8, positive 3, then that would give me negative 5. Okay. So let's try another one. How about 6 and 4? Oh, 6 and 4. There's a distance of 2 in between those. So that looks really good. Uh, they do multiply and give me negative 24. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's switch it back to black. So I'm going to go with 6x uh, and 4x. Uh, okay. Now if I multiply these two, they're going to be a positive 24x. So what I should do is make one of them negative. So a positive and a negative makes a negative. So I have to figure out which one's negative. Do I want more negatives or positives? Well, it looks like when I add them together, I have a negative number. So I want my negative to be on the bigger numbers. So I'll go with negative right here. So negative 6 times positive 4, negative 24. Negative 6x plus 4x, negative 2. All right, I'm set. All right. So you know, what I was doing right there is I'm, I'm logically thinking through the puzzle. It's, it's basically a guessing game. But what it does is it helps organize your thoughts. Okay. Um, you want to find two numbers that add together and give you this number. Two numbers that multiply and give you negative 24. So now you just have to move it into the box. You finish the x, and then you can go to do the box. So you place 2x squared where it should be, just like we had done the other day in nice green colors and then we place the negative 12 where it should be right here and now we know what these two things are and that's going to be 4x and negative 6x and it doesn't really matter if you put negative 6x on the top right on the bottom left you know it'll end up being the same thing so the next thing you have to do is you need to think about the greatest common factor between 2x squared and negative 6x. So what do those two share in common? Well, they share an x, so I'll go ahead and write x. And then the other thing they share in common is a positive 2, right? Because I look at this one, yeah, it has a 2. This one also has a 2, a 2 times negative 3. So I've done that. Now I need to think about this one. What do 2x squared and 4x share in common? Well, they share an x, and they also share a 2. Oh, yes, okay. Now, 
we look here and we see that we might have run into a problem right because we see that 2x goes here but if I put a 2x here it seems like I'm in trouble so let's try to get rid of that and let's just put an x here and the reason why I said we can't put a 2x is because what's 2x times 2x that would be 4x squared so let's think about it like this that means I can only put an x here now let's try to complete this so x times what gives me 4 well that's positive 4 2x times what gives me negative 6 well that's negative 3 okay now does it seem like I'm set yeah, it looks, that looks good. Negative 3 times positive 4 is negative 12. 2x times negative 3 gives me negative 6. x times 2x gives me 2x squared. x times 4 gives me 4x. So it looks right. Yeah, okay. Alright, so now I know my factors are going to be x minus 3 and 2x plus 4. So I factored it all out. So I know this is equal to the same thing as 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. Okay? Now, like these puzzles require a lot of thinking. Like you have to think back and double check your work. You know, to be honest with you, I, I was totally blown back that this was not 2x. I had to go back and think about it. So I want you to be thinking the same way that I am, you know. Nobody's perfect, but you have to go back and figure out what's wrong. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to show you guys Desmos, which is going to be the same problem. So this is what we graphed, right? 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. And then we factored it into x plus 3 times 2x, what was it, plus 4? No, it was minus 4. Wait a minute. 2x plus 4. Huh. Let's think about this. Okay, after slapping myself a few times, I realized what I was doing wrong. Hopefully, you guys don't yell at me. So. What I forgot was that this is x minus 3 and 2x plus 4. Exactly what we wrote in paint, right? So I don't know why I put x plus 3, but hey, I, I'm not perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the zeros. Now, to find the zero, what we're really doing is we're saying if we have y equals 0 and y equals x minus 3 and 2x plus 4 when did these two things hit each other this is a system back to systems right we have y equals 0 just like this and then we have a parabola going like this and when do these things hit each other well depending on where the parabola is you know it might not hit it at all or it might hit it once or it might hit it two times in this case it's going to hit it two times so Let's look at Desmos. So Desmos shows me that it does hit it two times, right? And it goes like this. And you see that these two are the same thing. I can turn this off and turn it back on. It's the same thing. I factored it, but they are the same. And if I look at my zeros, they're right here and right here. And you can uh, see it right here. Negative two, zero, three, zero. So let's do it on paint. And that's going to be like this essentially what you're doing is you're substituting right here and you're saying 0 is equal to x minus 3 times 2x plus 4 my mouse is funny today alright so essentially what's the only way you can get two numbers being multiplied to equal 0 
well, I can't really think of any ways other than, you know, let's try something like 1 times 3, that's going to be 3. Or 3 times 1, that's still 3. 2 times 5, 10. 5 times 2 is still 10. The only way I can get something being multiplied to equal 0 is when one of them is 0. Like 0 times 100 is 0. 100 times 0 is still 0. So what I need to do is treat this and try to make this 0. And that's going to be x minus 3 equals 0. And that means x equals 3. And what about this one? This one I treat the same way. 2x plus 4 equals 0. And that gives me 2x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. Negative 2. So if I look at these points, this tells me that it should be 3, comma, and I can check here that y is 0, 3, comma, 0. And this one should be negative 2, comma, 0. So what we've done now is we found the zeros, and if we look at Desmos, we can see it right here. There's 3, comma, 0. Negative 2, comma, 0. So this is a very, very important part. If I'm uh, throwing a ball and say this parabola is turned upside down, I can figure out where I started throwing it and where it ended up. So this is pretty much full circle now. We're, we're basically done with quadratics. We just have to tie everything together now. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next week or two and after spring break. So you have all the tools you need now. And uh, I'll try and make another concept map where you guys can like visualize all the things that you guys have done. But essentially, you have everything you need now. You can figure out when you threw a ball, when is at its highest point. That would be the vertex and then where it fell, okay? So you have all these different tools. Uh, we've gone over, and hopefully this was helpful. I know it was a long video, but now you have Xbox. You can do it without the Xbox if it's like an A that's less than you know, a large number. You just want one for A. If you just want to do the area, area model. Otherwise, the Xbox will work for everything. And then zeros, all you have to do is just have the factors, set them equal to zero because how else can you get something equal to zero? If you have two things being multiplied, how can I get them equal to zero? One of them has to be zero, right? Five times five, I can't get zero. Negative five times five, negative 25, I still can't get zero. The only way I can get two things multiplied to equal zero, something times zero, or zero times something, okay? And that's how you did the zeros. So hopefully this helps. I know the homework is technically kind of short, only 11 problems, but Hopefully you guys have it right. So I will be checking your homework very hard. Okay? Alright. Thank you. See you guys in class.